Ship 26 may have a stranger future ahead. After a bunch of design changes on nose cones, Ship 26's common dome peaked outside of Tent 3 most recently, revealing a new design for the flight termination system enclosures. As a Twitter user named The Ring Watchers pointed out, the new FTS boxes appear to have hinged doors on the front, allowing easy access to the internals. While at the previous ships, here is Ship 25's common dome, crew had to unbolt plates from the aero cover to access the inside. Huge thanks to the Ring Watchers for this awesome photo. Interestingly enough, besides upgrading the next-gen prototypes, SpaceX's Mars-bound Starship rocket is getting some work done to gear up for its upcoming orbital launch attempt. SpaceX aims to launch this test flight, which is the first orbital mission for the Starship program, in late October or November. It'll involve Booster 7 and Ship 24 prototype versions of Starship's Super Heavy First Stage and Starship Upper Stage, respectively. The company is now making good progress on both Booster 7 and Ship 24. Booster 7 was transported away from its perch on the orbital launch mount to the Star Factory in the middle of September to conduct reliability upgrades for its fateful flight. And with road closures posted for this week, most likely works on Booster 7 in the Mega Bay are nearing completion. Which means this Super Heavy could roll out to the launch site, heading to pre-launch tests in the next few days. That amazingly matches up with the schedule Musk announced before. For now, it's not yet clear if SpaceX will conduct full stacking of the Starship or the next static fire test first. But as another factor in play, Ship 24, B-7's vehicle pair, originally a Pad B resident at the suborbital launch site for some time, surprisingly was moved into position on Friday, rolling to the tower at the OLS in readiness for Booster 7's return and the preparations for full stacking. One surprising element of the previous week has been the lack of attention paid to Booster 8. The vehicle was rolled to the launch pad on September 19th and is expected to be proof tested in the near future while Booster 7 is upgraded back at the factory. But sadly, it hasn't undergone any notable work. Instead, the company is focusing on its successor, Booster 9, which as Musk forecasted has many design changes. This booster has already begun stacking at the production site. We also spotted Booster 9's aft section in the Mega Bay in late August. Notably, this is the first not to have hydraulic power units mounted onto the side. According to some assumptions, B9 could be the first booster to use the new Raptor 2.1 engines with electric thrust vector control that Musk shared a while ago. This will allow much more simplified control of the engine during flight and also simplified hardware and weight reductions on the vehicles, especially on the boosters where 13 of these engines will need to move. Thus, most likely, Booster 9 will become the set design for the vehicle in the future. Besides that, the Starship orbital launch mount received upgrades throughout last week. The SpaceX crews are installing additional blast shielding to protect the interior of the structure, heading an upcoming many-engine static fire. Elsewhere, at SpaceX's rocket development facility in McGregor, Texas, the company has recently been busy testing the Raptor 2 rocket engines for the last week or so. Tests for the Raptor 2, which is the latest generation of the Raptor engines, kicked off in December, and since then SpaceX has been rapidly firing the engines. Each Raptor 2 is aiming at generating more thrust at a higher pressure than the first generation engine. The performance upgrades naturally place higher stress on the engine's components, and in line with its policy of failing fast to learn more, SpaceX is testing them as quickly as it can. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos' rocket engine, after several years of delay, finally nears its debut, bringing the U.S. closer to ending its politically fraught dependence on a Russian-made model. In fact, Blue Origin predicted in 2014 that its BE-4 engine would be ready by 2017 to launch the new Vulcan rocket built by the United Launch Alliance, or ULA, but the Government Accountability Office, as recently as June, cited continued technical challenges in developing a U.S.-produced rocket engine. Now, the U.S. Space Force is expressing optimism, saying in a statement that Vulcan launch system development activities continue to make progress toward a first test launch by December, because ULA and Blue Origin have completed originally planned BE-4 development testing and have successfully demonstrated full engine performance. 
ULA used the dependable Russian-made RD-180 engine to launch its Atlas V heavy rocket on about 80 successful civil, commercial, and national security launches since 2000, according to the Congressional Research Service. But Congress demanded a replacement for the Russian engines after Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. And that argument has only gained momentum since President Vladimir Putin's military invasion of Ukraine in February. Elon Musk, Bezos' fellow billionaire and competing space entrepreneur, ripped into that Russian connection in his successful fight to compete with what he called the Boeing Lockheed Monopoly for Pentagon satellite launches. Space Exploration Technologies Corp., or SpaceX, has received final certifications to fly its Falcon Heavy rocket to launch the most sensitive, classified missions, including the first one between October and December using reusable boosters. For Bezos, the Space Force's positive view on his company's progress provides some good news after closely held Blue Origin was forced to abort a launch on September 12th of its suborbital New Shepard rocket shortly after takeoff in West Texas. It was the first major failure for the company since transitioning to routine commercial flights. United Launch Alliance's Vulcan program is now focused on completing BE-4 qualification testing and flight engine deliveries, the Space Force said in its statement. Its other elements are progressing through final qualification testing to support initial launch capability. ULA needs two successful flight tests that are planned for commercial launches as a requirement for Space Force certification that rockets powered by the new engine can carry the most sensitive U.S. military and intelligence cargo. Frank Calvelli, the Air Force's Assistant Secretary for Space Systems, said in a statement that ULA and Blue Origin have done a lot to reduce risk, but a lot of work and testing remains to meet this December's launch. The Space Force said it expects to complete ULA's initial certification of the Vulcan rocket with the BE-4 engine as soon as March of 2023 for lower launch vehicle performance and payload capabilities, and final certification in 2025 for our largest and most stressing national security missions. Those certifications would position ULA to better compete against SpaceX and possibly other companies for a third round of as many as 39 national security space launch missions from the fiscal year of 2025 through 2027, with the first award by October of 2024. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.